as you can see this resistor right here is 3k ohms at 18 watts so that should be pretty useful Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some pretty cool high wattage resistors. So I got a few of these high wattage resistors a while back at an electronics warehouse in Riverside. I'll put a link to their store in the description. But anyway, they have tons, hundreds, thousands of these amazing high wattage resistors. And these resistors can handle extremely large wattages and they have a wide variety of different values. So we're going to be taking a look at some of these really cool resistors and maybe testing some of them to their limits. Alright, so these are the variety of high wattage resistors that I got from the sale. So as you can see I have quite a few different ones of them. Let's get my multimeter so we can take a look at the different resistors and their values. This resistor right here, actually it says, it says it's rated for 10,000 10, ohms but it doesn't explicitly state the, say, state the wattage rating on it. So I'm not exactly sure what the wattage rating is on that specific resistor. This one is an ohmite resistor. As you can see, it's 50,000 ohms. And it's tapped at different points. So if we take a look at some of the different points of these resistors, we can see that from here to here, it's approximately 10k ohms. And so for each of these little points, there's a 5k ohm difference in between them. So you can use this high wattage resistor as actually a pretty precise resistor. That's cool. This resistor is 40 ohms and it's 55 watts. This tiny resistor being 55 watts, that's crazy. As you can see, this resistor right here is 3k ohms at 18 watts. So that should be pretty useful. And then we got a few more resistors. Now this one is pretty interesting. I like this one a lot. I scoot over these other resistors. This resistor is actually a variable resistor. So as you can see we have this center tap. So if we unscrew the screw that's holding this tap down, then we can slide around the tap and actually adjust varying voltages on this device. Slide it on down all the way to the bottom or I can slide it up to the top and depending on where I slide it we can change the resistance at the center tap. Across it all the way has, I just dropped that. That's wrong, not five mega ohms. Oh, there it is, 500 uh, ohms. And then at the center tap, we've got a resistance of 250 ohms, as you can see it's in the middle. So as you can see, if you look inside this resistor, there's all these little wires that are wound around it. And these little wires are resistive wires. So they allow the resistor to have resistance. So there's actually a little formula. So for every, depending on the, the constant of these materials, they have a specific amount of resistance per inch or centimeter or whatever unit you want to use. All right, let me explain a little bit about resistors and Ohm's law. So all resistors have to follow something called Ohm's law. It's a universal constant. E equals IR. So that's voltage equals current times resistance. We can use this value to calculate, approximately, how a resistor will function under certain electrical conditions. So all resistors under a constant temperature will follow this formula. If you have a increase the voltage and you keep the resistance the same, then the current will increase proportionally and vice versa to all the things. And so now we need to look at something else called the discharge. Because of course on this resistor you see that it has an 18 watts of discharge and 3100 ohms. And so, all right, so let's see if we can calculate some different values. We're gonna use this resistor right here, which has a discharge rating of 26 watts. And let's assume we're not using the, tw the center tap. We have 500 ohms. Uh, of resistance across it. And so we have a nice even 500 ohms and we don't know what our current flow is and we're gonna have a let's say we have a 10 volt voltage drop that should make things easier. So we have 10 volts divided by 500 ohms. Alright so that'll equal 1 over 50 amps which is pretty small. And then to find the actual wattage because this thing can handle 26 watts, we need to multiply this again by the voltage inputted. So we have 150 times 10, that means we can kill the zeros and we have one fifth of a watt. 
So that means if we put 10 volts across this resistor, we'd have a current flow of 1 50th amps, we'd have a current flow of, we'd have a wattage discharge of 1 5th of a watt. So let's test that out, shall we? As you can see, when I connect my resistor up to this power supply, and we crank it up to 10 volts, You see we have a current flow of 15 milliamps, which is about 1 over 50 amps. So we're able to calculate that correctly. And so this resistor isn't even getting very hot, because there's a very large, very small amount of power flowing through it. Let's try it with a smaller resistor and do some more calculations there. Alright, let's calculate the theoretical voltage at which this resistor could not handle it anymore. So we know we're going to use this equation, which is uh, power, which is watts, equals E squared over R. And we divide that because current times voltage equals wattage discharge. And so we have power, I think I need to change that to P, equals E squared over R. So we know the resistor's value is 3100. So we have E squared over 3100. We have power wattage dissipation equals 26 watts. So if we multiply 3100 by 26, and we take the square root of that. That should give us the maximum voltage across this resistor that it would take to blow up this resistor or to surpass its rating. That means you'd need to have approximately 283.9 volts across this resistor in order to render it uh, too many watts flowing through for it to function correctly. Now let's calculate that value for this 40 ohm resistor to see if we can surpass that value. That means we would need to have a current of 1.17 amps and a voltage of 46.904 volts to make this resistor go over its 55 watt value. We could try that with a variac. Now we're going to use this principle to do something actually useful. So we're going to try and figure out the resistive value it takes to light this small light bulb up. Now this light bulb, first we need to find out the forward voltage and the current draw of this light bulb. And we're going to see if we can light up this about 6 volt light bulb using 110 volts AC. So this light bulb, when it is on and running as you can see down here, has a voltage of approximately 6 volts flowing through it and a current flow of 2.27 amps or 226 milliamps. So we need to figure out the resistive value and the current that will flow through this. So we have E, which is 10, equals I, which is 0.226, times R. That's about 44 ohms. So, all right, I messed up. It's supposed to be 104 volts at 0.226 ohms. So we can put that in the calculator and we can see that we divide 104 by 0.226, which is going to give us a little over maybe 500 ohms. So let's test that out. And that's going to be 104 volts dropped across it. And so we can calculate the amount of power. So that's 104 volts at 0.226 amps. So instead of dividing, we're going to multiply. That's going to be a 23 watt discharge through the resistor. And so I think that this resistor should do just fine for the task that we need it to do. This resistor is approximately 500 ohms, and so that should work with our small resistor value. All right, so we can pull out the good old alligator clips and connect up this light bulb, and we can connect it to one side of the outputs from my Variac, which is set to 110 volts AC. And we can connect the other side to this resistor. And we can connect the other side of the resistor to the other side of the light bulb. There we go. So theoretically, when I turn on my Variac, nothing should explode. And the light lights up perfectly. So if I touch this resistor, I can already feel it to be getting a little bit warm. And we're going to measure the voltage drops and see if it matches up to our calculations. So we should get a voltage drop across the resistor of approximately 104 volts. And now we can verify that by setting the multimeter to measure. Yeah, 103, 102 volts. And you can see that the voltage drop across the light bulb is about 5 volts. 
Now this, in fact, is not the most useful use of a resistor because ow, 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 that resistor is getting very hot. Now there's a lot easier ways to run a 5 volt LED bulb, a 5 volt uh, incandescent light bulb off 110 volts AC, but I'm just here to show you this resistor and how we're operating this resistor within its limits, although it is getting hot, to successfully lower the voltage to light up an LED and how to do some quick math with Ohm's Law to figure that out. Now this resistor could handle the heat. It's made of metal and ceramic, so it can handle almost any heat you throw at it. And also, if you were to have air cooling through this little hole in the middle, it would also be able to help that out. But anyway, that's a very interesting way of running a resistor. Now, these high wattage resistors are really cool for a variety of different purposes. You can use these in a lot of different vacuum tube devices, where vacuum tubes need these big resistors because they have big voltages, and when you have big voltages, you need big resistors. And these can also be used in a variety of other electronic devices, but they're not used as much anymore due to the fact the vacuum tube devices are declining in popularity. So I would like to show you a little interesting thing that happens when you have a, a resistor wattage discharge value that is a little bit too low. And so I have some of these 33 ohm resistors, and these resistors are rated at one quarter of a watt. To put that in perspective, this resistor is rated at 55 watts, and this resistor is rated at one quarter of a watt. So there's a pretty big difference there. So if I connect this resistor up to my power supply, you'll see what happens. So now as we calculated before, we can figure out the max voltage across this resistor before we surpass its wattage discharge rating. So we have 2.87 volts. That is the maximum voltage that can go through this resistor before it blows up. So let's put 2.87 volts in and see how the resistor holds up. So as you can see, I'll start up the power supply and I'll put 2. 8.7 volts inside there. So if I touch the resistor, it's not getting too hot, but that is the maximum uh, discharge uh, uh, dissipation of the resistor. So let's crank that up a little higher to 4 volts. So we've already exceeded the maximum dissipation. And as you can see, it's getting pretty hot. Well, you can't see that, but I can feel it. If we crank that up to 9 volts, ow, ow, that resistor is dissipating about 3 watts of power. We crank it up to 12 volts, the resistor starts smoking. We crank it up a little bit higher, the resistor catches fire and goes out. Here's that same resistor again. Now this variety of high wattage resistors that I own will come in handy someday. They'll make great additions to different projects. They'll make different projects work a lot better than they can because I'll be able to safely have high uh, dissipation of these resistors safely. I can have high wattages dissipating. So I hope you learned something in this video about resistors and about Ohm's Law and about a few other cool things like calculating resistor value and wattage discharges and so Hope you learned something cool in this video. As always, thank you for watching and stay tuned for my next video.